You wanted to see me? Uh, no, Lemon. I did. Albino Ninja! Look, I never should have interfered with, um, whatever this is. Work husband slash uncle. Co-worker slash little brother. Right, well, she's not ready to move on. It's true. I'm wearing a Dwayne Reed bag as underwear today. Oh, right. And for whatever reason, he needs you too. It's a symbiotic relationship. I'm a mighty great white shark lemon, and you are a remora clinging to me with your suction cup head. I give you a free ride, and in exchange, you, uh, eat my parasites. Betcha he reads, betcha she sews, betcha they've made me a closet of clothes. Lemon, what tragedy happened in your life that you insist upon punishing yourself with all this mediocrity? What, because I'm eating a turkey sub? Your turkey sub, your clothes, the fact that a woman of your resources and position lives like some boxcar hobo, or maybe it's the fact that while I'm saying all this, you have a piece of lettuce stuck in your hair. This is the unlisted number of stone the most exclusive restaurant in the city, currently. I think it's time that you start enjoying some of the finer things in life. Completely unsolicited and inappropriate. I will only accept it because I love food. Do you know why Jack Welsh is the greatest leader since the Pharaohs? Because he didn't only involve himself in our work lives, but our personal lives as well. He introduced us to the finest booze, the most restrictive country clubs. He gave us the names of the most discreet private investigators to spy on our ex-wives. He held our hands during our triumphs and our Senate hearings. I want to hold your hand, Lemon. Yikes. This is a perfect example. You have a million dollar view, but you refuse to acknowledge that there's a whole world out there. Oh my. There appears to be a gentleman making passionate, angry love to himself. Yeah, I know. That's why I closed the blinds in the first place. Right in his office. Huh. Lemon, I like to think of myself as a winner, and I like to surround myself with winners. I see potential in you. Let me be your Jack Welsh. Let me be your mentor. No, thank you. That is unfortunate. You've uh, got to admire his persistence and stamina, though. Am I wrong, or is he in the middle of a staff meeting? Maybe you should be his mentor. Obviously, he doesn't need one. He's got it all figured out. Hey, do you have a neck pillow? I blew mine up, and now it smells like my mouth. I never sleep on planes. I don't want to get incepted. Are you going somewhere? Carol has a flight to Raleigh Dorham, so I'm going with him, and we're going to drive out and spend a few days at an inn at Nags Head. You're going to Nags Head? Isn't that redundant? You're going to Nags Head? Isn't that redundant? You will hand me an envelope predicting my joke about Nags Head? That is solid. Avery and I are also having a little romantic weekend together. Before the baby comes, we're going to Toronto for the G8 Economic Summit. It's going to be very erotic. Look at us being all adulty. I packed underwear that isn't gray. Isn't it nice dating someone you have so much in common with? Like you, Avery is a type A nut job. And of course, you and Carol share your trademark stubbornness. We're not stubborn, we're principled. Have a nice trip, Lemon. Break out those underpants, but be careful. Dating yourself is a double-edged sword. It means you also share the same flaws. Well, that would only be a problem if I had any flaws. Not only is your fly open, there's a pencil sticking out of it. Good day to you, sir. Good morning. How is the happy couple today? Well, it's no surprise we're sitting here. You two have always thrown off that will they or won't they vibe, and it's been a real hoot to watch your courtship. Okie dokie. Now, when two employees get married, it is my job to make sure that the employee is not receiving favoritism from his or her boss. Favoritism? Really? He's trying to cancel my show. Uh-huh. And what about your little announcement last night? Do you know how many fires I had to put out this morning because of you? And what was that voice? It is my imitation of Drew Barrymore's impression of that crazy lady. Let's keep this meeting short. Our marriage is a technicality, and it will be remedied. Also, in order for there to be favoritism, we'd have to actually still be friends. All righty. Let's just dive on in. 
does the employee spend an inordinate amount of time in the employer's office compared to other employees? Well, yes, I suppose, but only because Miss Lemon is incapable of doing anything on her own. Oh, please, half the time when I go up there, it's to help you choose a tie, and they're all red or blue. Yeah, where I come from, if you have more than two colors on a tie, it means you're looking for a certain kind of bar. Are all workday conversations business-related, or do personal issues often dominate discussion, including but not limited to, mothers, diarrhea, having babies, problems in the bedroom, neckties, food issues, foot disorders, having it all. Okay, yes, in the past we have advised each other. For instance, Jack taught me not to wear tan slacks with a tan turtleneck. I thought it looked nice, but he rightly pointed out that it made me look like a giant condom. And Lemon is the only one of my subordinates who's not afraid to warn me when I'm being too authoritative or handsome. Or when you have eye boogers. Uh, have you spent time with each other's families? Have you attended special events together, such as class reunions, birthday or holiday celebrations, weddings, or extended car trips? Are you each other's emergency contacts? Do you ever drink together at work, perhaps while summarizing what you've learned over the day or week? Have you shared intimate details of your fears, hopes, and dreams, both personal and professional? Is this the longest and perhaps most meaningful relationship in your life? Do you often find yourselves thinking the same thing and then saying it at the exact same time? I I'm apologize, sorry, Jack. I never should have tried to blackmail you. I'll sign the papers. And I shouldn't have threatened your show. I'll leave that to the parental decency groups. And I'll back off on the budget and the bat mitzvahs. Okay, now we're going to do word association. Foreplay. We're done. Wait, Miss Slave. Uh, try to walk like a woman, Lemon. Your fly's open, Jack. That way, after the crash, they'll be like, oh, I did see him drinking. Oh, God, that idiot. What did he do? Yeah, that's what they'll say. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't worry, Lemon. There is no cause for alarm. You are watching my video suicide note. Oh, my God! Try not to blame yourself. How were you to know that I was in such a dark place that the smallest thing, for example, a close friend's refusal to reconcile, would be the final straw? He killed himself because of me. This is like what happened with my gynecologist all over again. I do have a parting gift for you, Lemon. His phone. I can track his phone. Go to YouTube and search Hamlet the Mini Pig goes downstairs. Hamlet, the mini pig. No, phone first. I'll watch the pig video in the cab. Jack, wait. There's so much to live for. Don't you want to know how Mad Men ends? Oh, oh and Don goes to work for Peggy. <gasps> Hello, Lemon. What? I thought you were going to kill yourself. That was the idea. It was extreme, but necessary. I didn't want to be just another person on your grudge list. Yeah, which reminds me, why am I still seeing new top chefs with that bald salad ruiner? I had 10 hours to force you to confront the soul-crushing horror of a life without me. I didn't lie when I said I was going away. I'm off to discover what makes me happy. I have to find my bliss, which for once is not an acronym for beautiful ladies in short shorts. How long will you be gone? As long as it takes to figure out what's next. Although I've only been on this boat a minute, I've already realized two things about myself. One, I could totally be a professional boat model. And two, I do know one thing that has made me happy these last seven years. Lemon, there is a word, a once special word, that's been tragically co-opted by the romance industrial complex. And I would hate to use it here and have you think that I am suggesting any kind of romantic sentiment, let alone an invitation to scale Bone Mountain. It's a word that comes to us by way of the old high German luba from the Latin lubere, meaning to be pleasing. So I'm going to use this word to describe how I feel about you in the way that our Anglo-Saxon forefathers would have used it in reference to, say, uh, a hot bowl of bear meat or your enemy's skull split. I love you too, Jack. <laughs>